what's happening everyone? In the last video in this series we covered the binary search tree data structure but omitted the deletion function for sake of time. So in this lesson we'll be completing our class by adding in this crucial function. If you'd like to learn more about the data structure itself, I'd suggest you watch the prior video because in this lesson, after introducing the idea behind the deletion function, we'll just be jumping straight into the code where we left off last time. As always, if you find the video useful, consider throwing me a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to stay up to date on the rest of my Python coding content. So to start things off, when we talk about the deletion function for a binary search tree, we normally break the discussion into a study of three separate cases. The first case, as we can see on this slide, involves deleting a leaf node, which, if you recall from the last video, is any node with no children. This is by far the easiest of the three cases. All you have to do is simply remove the reference to the node from its parent one level above. For the example on this slide, we would remove the reference to the for node by setting the left child pointer in the sixth node to none. The second possible case is when you try to delete a node with a single child. This case is a bit more involved, but still fairly simple to implement. To delete the 14 node, as we can see on the slide, we would go up to its parent, the 10 node, and swap out its reference to the 14 node with the child of the 14 node, in this case the 13 node. This operation is very similar to the way you delete a node from the linked list. On this slide we can see how the tree would look after deleting the 14 node. The third and final case to cover is when we try to delete a node with two children. This is the most complex of the three, but thanks to recursion we can handle it in a very straightforward fashion. In the example on the slide, when trying to delete the node containing 6, we first traverse through the tree in order to find the in order successor of the 6 node. If the elements of the tree were in an array in sorted order, this would be the element directly after 6. Once we have the value of the successor node, we replace the value in the node we wish to delete with the value of the successor node, replacing integer 6 with integer 7 in our example. Now that we have two copies of the value of the successor node, we call the deletion function again recursively, this time requesting to delete the original successor node. In this example, on the second call, we would enter into case number 1, where we can simply delete the item because it's a leaf node. Now that we've covered all three cases, we'll move over to a coding editor and implement the deletion function using Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, we'll begin by adding in some variables and methods that will help us in creating the deletion function. We'll first add a new member variable named parent to the node class to hold the parent of a node when it's placed in the tree. By default, this will be set to none. We'll then need to alter the binary search tree insert function such that it correctly sets this value after inserting a new element in the tree. Take note that the only node not to have a parent in the tree will be the root node. The next item on the list is to implement a new method named find. This will function identically to the search function from the prior lesson, but will return the actual node rather than returning a boolean true-false value. If the value passed into the find function is not found in the tree, we'll just return none. We now have all the items we need to begin writing the actual delete function. For a cleaner user interface, we'll be declaring two versions of the function, one called delete value and another called delete node. The only difference being delete value will be passed in integer, whereas delete node will be passed in node. Inside delete value, we'll simply be calling the delete node function, passing the return value of the find function as the node parameter. Inside delete node, we'll first be writing two more helper functions. The first, called min value node, will be passed a single node, which it will treat as the root of a binary search tree. It will then traverse down to the left of the tree until it finds the smallest element, returning its value. We'll be using this function later to find the next in-order successor. The second function, named numChildren, will just return the number of children attached to the input node, either 0, 1, or 2. We'll now create variables to hold both the parent of the node to delete, as well as the number of children. Using the number of children variable, we'll now break the method into the three cases we discussed earlier. In the first if statement, we'll cover case 1, setting the appropriate pointer in the parent to none to remove the leaf node. In the second if statement, we'll cover case 2. We'll first create a new variable named child to hold the single child of the node we wish to delete. We'll then make the change to the parent node, replacing the pointer to the node we wish to delete with the pointer to its child node. At the end, we'll update the parent pointer and the child to reflect the fact we've moved it up a level in the tree. In the third and final if statement, we'll cover the recursive case 3, wherein the node we wish to delete has two children. In this case, we'll first locate the next in-order successor using our minValueNode function. We'll then copy the value we found in that node into the node we wish to delete. At the end, as we explained earlier, we'll call the deleteNode function recursively this time passing the original in-order successor as the node to delete. 
Now switch over to terminal and run some test cases to ensure our deletion function is working properly. Since we're operating from the Python interpreter directly, we'll need to import our binary search tree class. We'll now create an instance of the class and insert some elements. The image on the right of the screen is what our tree now looks like in memory. Calling our printtree function, we can see that our in-order traversal has read the elements in sorted order, meaning they're in their appropriate positions in the tree. We'll now call the delete value function, passing integer 5 as the parameter. This should effectively delete the root node, and since the root has two children, this will trigger the recursive deletion case. Calling printtree again, we can see that the element 5 is removed, and the rest of the elements remain in sorted order, meaning our tree now looks like the updated picture on the right. We'll now perform the same test several more times to ensure our method can handle all deletion cases. That takes us to the end of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and can now implement the deletion function for a binary search tree confidently. I'll see you guys in the next one.